just going over some of the drawing uh, stuff in perspective. Um, so say we want to draw the uh, some perspective grids. First thing I do is I grab this polygon tool here and I make sure up in the settings for the polygon tool we hit the star with the indentation set to 99% then I'm going to drag out if I hold shift it keeps it uniform and now I have that I'm going to take my move tool and I can move that around once I've got that Drag out another one while holding shift. I'm holding alt shift while I'm doing that. I could also just du duplicate that layer down here. And then I often like to use control T for transform to, and then I hold shift. Holding shift keeps it horizontally locked. I'm gonna drag out this some more and I'm gonna hold alt as I do it. Alt keeps it transforming from the center. So move that somewhere where you want it. Hit enter to complete the transform. So now I have two uh, vanishing points. And I might move this one off just slightly. Oops. There we go. That's fine. Say, I think I can use command. Well, no, I can't do that. I can um, change the color of this. Clicking on that tool. Then I just change the stroke color to be, say, red. Actually, you don't want the stroke to change. Sorry, let's see that up. I want to change the fill, maybe. There we go. The fill. So on this one, I'm going to change the fill to blue. Take the stroke down. And there we go. So we have a blue and a red. Uh, group those two from my perspective. And then taking out the opacity so they're just kind of not so in my face. Double click that background layer. Let's just fill it to a neutral gray, a little brighter. I made my blue lines almost disappear, so I will adjust that color to be a little darker. Let's go down here. It's dark blue. There we go. So now when I want to draw a cube, I can just find anywhere on this grid. those ones I'm going to follow the, the red lines going off in the distance that way. Now here I just need to stay with the blue lines to that vanishing point. I don't have, I'm not directly on the blue lines, I'm just kind of using them as a guide. Make an estimate about where that cube shape will end. And then just finish the cube like that. You might want to draw your cube to show a little, maybe a little bit lower on the horizon line. That way, just bring this down here. So now I can see more on top of the cube. Once your cube is drawn, we 
you want to pick a light source. So once again, talking about the good old pole technique. Put the light on top. There's there, and those are your light rays emitting from that source. And then wherever that pole hits the ground becomes a vanishing point for where those points from up top. There's lots of diagrams on the internet for how that works. Um, I'm gonna pick a light source coming there, more or less. So let's just do this on a new layer. Just gonna do some estimation. Now I need to do some, do some green lines, are basically coming from where the light. So those are going to go to a vanishing point this way. And let's just put a line right here. See where that corner is. If that light source is close, then these will vanish quickly. Um, and that's going to put some more extreme perspective on there. So there we go. Now we know our cast shadow. Let's go back to this layer. It's going to be from here to there, to there to there. If we could see, we would actually see the cast shadow go here as well. If we saw behind the cave. From there, you now have a cube drawn in perspective with the cast shadow, and you're ready to start painting. I'll often just take a, to fill in those shapes, just use your polygonal lasso tool to trace them. Pick a value. This is going to be my dark side. medium side and our top be here. That is my darkest value. So I'm gonna come up. I can that should be the approximate high value using that halfway to black. Technique. Now the background I'm going to go ahead and run Command U for hue saturation. And I'm going to make it, um, in this instance, let's just make it lighter. So it's more of a white, very light. So now the cast shadow, I'm going to draw a shape for that. picker, pick my color sample, and move halfway down to get the appropriate value for that cast shadow. So let's go ahead and hide our lines. Right. Let's hide our perspective grid. And you see we have um, a cube drawn in perspective with the cast shadow, and you're ready to move on. You have three different sides, which you can lock the transparency so you can paint them independently. Um, the cast shadow is on top of this layer, so we could do that. And you can do all your uh, intricate or detailed shading for things like uh, gradients, reflected light, and that. All those things we've talked about, we can soften our edges. Um, at some point, you'll want to take these three and merge them when you merge them, that allows you to make some of these transitions between these edges to 
to remove some of the hard edge. You might also decide at this point that you don't need that much canvas. So we're going to just crop in and make our new document more like that. And that would be nice, better composition. All right. Um, hopefully that was um, a good, concise, and quick demonstration and uh, to basically review some of the things we've gone over. And uh, good luck with it.